You've been doing the music thing for like six yeah. years now. Yeah, professionally, yeah. When did you get, I feel like the Beyonce project couldn't have been that long. No, that was, it came out to 2019. Damn, oh, yeah. that was a few years ago. Yeah, man. Wow, we, what's we that, had, four years ago? We had a pandemic, man. Bro, how has things been since then? <laughs> it's been good, it's been good. Like it's, it was interesting because when it came out and the pandemic hit, it kind of just shut everything down. Mm-hmm. So it was one of those things where it was just it was just weird because it was like I couldn't really promote it. I couldn't really like go out and do shows and nothing based on that record. But it was it was good, you know what I mean? Because I still had that, you know what I mean, that calling card because one of the things about that name is like when you walk into a room and you're associated with that name, it's a small club. Mm. So you know what I mean? So when you're able to kind of say, you know, I did this with this person, like it's a whole different ball game. Facts. Yeah. Yo, what what has changed since then for you? I think um I think that 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 cosign by itself kind of just gives me a level of um, certainty. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. a level of like just confidence, and then also it gives people confidence in me as far as what I'm going to present to them, what I'm going to give to them. Because mm-hmm. when that name is associated with you, it very much just says like, oh, there's a certain level that inst- of standard that you have to have to even be in that room with her. So it's like. You know, what I mean, when I even when I walked in the room and I was working with the other artists and the other producers on that project, I just realized like, man, everybody in here is like Grammy Award winning, Grammy mm-hmm. Award nominated. Like, these are these are the goons of the industry, you know. So when I realized that, I was just like, all right, cool. It kind of gave me a stamp that I didn't expect to have, mm-hmm. and it's made it a lot easier to just really walk into the rooms and have confidence that you know I'm one of them as well. But well, from 2019, right after mm-hmm. you do it, after you get the buzz, the everything, everybody rocking with you. But from then to mm-hmm. now, what you think was the biggest the biggest change for you and the music you make, the music you write, mm-hmm. et cetera? I really got to see, when I got to see kind of her machine, right? To understand that like she does a little bit of everything mm-hmm. and has her hand in everything. It made me look at the way I kind of like carry myself as an artist, carry myself as a brand and just really lean more heavily into like branding myself mm. into creating, you know, the name, not just the name, but just like the structure that is the brand. So. In the beginning, you know, it was just like, you know, I'm, I'm tinkering with the sound, trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what the sound means, who my audience is, and those type of things. But when I really got the chance to work with her, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, this is a whole thing. Like, you got to build a machine behind it to make it move. And, you know what I mean? Like, the blessing for me is, like, I was already building the machine, but just not knowing that's what it was. Mm. You know what I mean? I was already kind of doing a little bit of everything and already had kind of, like, my background in everything. So when it came to actually being an artist and standing in front and, you know, one thing that I really just get complimented on is that like, I know what I want and who I am. And that's because I spent the time to really flesh it out, figure it out. You know, and once I got to that point, I was like, oh, I'm good. I want, I did want to talk to you about this, um, going back into the, the Beyonce thing, mm-hmm. right? And writing for Beyonce. So the way you explain this writing camp, it sounds like a, I'm trying to stop cursing. It sounds like a, a like one of them sweatshops. The way Bruh. the way it's explained. It, it, but it's not it's it's more like it's more like she got the Avengers together. Fact, I mean, yeah, like, I mean you know what I mean? But it's like everybody in one yeah. building writing is like, okay, cool. You write some. Is that good? That's camps. That's good. Come in the room. That's that's music camps, bro. Like camps, they'll literally put you in different rooms and it's like, we're gonna match you with this producer today, we're gonna match you with this writer today. And it's just like we're, it's like speed dating. That's mm. the better way to describe it. It's like speed dating. It's like I'm gonna get this person to match with this producer and we're gonna see how that works. We're gonna get this writer to work with this producer, see how that works. And a lot of the times what you realize is like Man, like creativity is about combination, right? It's about collaboration, but it's like if you gotta have the right combination of writers and producers to work together in order to make that work. Mm. Cause if you don't have that, then it's like, that's how you can't really, you know, find the magic of things. Cause like human beings, like we're all about energy and frequencies and all that. So it's like, you put the wrong people in the room, you can have the wrong energy and wrong frequencies. You know what I mean? So I got really lucky with that camp because everybody in that camp, like I said, was like one of them. You know what I mean? They were special writers, special yeah, producers. There, like, Psh, bro, you got it was like to watch people go in and out, in when, and out. When did Burner Boy drop? Uh, what was the album that had last last one? Oh, uh, that had to be after two thousand nineteen. Yeah, it's definitely after two thousand nineteen. So you you kind of like didn't even know that when he blew up. I would say after when he dropped. But you gotta understand, like being an African, I'm going to the. Oh, pub. you already knew. I already know. That's imagine being doing. next to Burner Well, not you, but yeah. imagine like somebody being next to Burner Boy, not knowing that like that's Burner. Yeah. That's the that's what's about gonna to be. cultivate a whole like yeah. different. Yeah. 
Damn. And, and he was and it's like it's it's so interesting now to see what Afrobeats has become. What? Because I was one of those kids that you know I'm I'm going to the African parties, I'm going to the African weddings, I'm going to the African funerals, and they're playing this music. You know what I mean? So I'm just hearing the music before any of my friends are really getting it and understanding what it is and what it means to the culture. So like you know what I mean I'm one of the first people who's sitting there and I'm like yo this Afrobeat stuff is coming, and everyone's like okay whatever like you know what I mean but. It, to see it become what it is now, I'm like, okay. It's no, it's it's almost like unfathomable or even just, I can't even find a word to think about it because Afrobeat really might be my favorite genre of music right now. Cause you know what it is? It's the happiest genre. Mm, it's it's happy, bro. It's a vibe. And everything else is just like, everything's toxic. Like even when you look at like R&B, for example, right? And you look at like artists, like there's a lot of like toxicity. Everybody talking about, you know, my man cheated or I'm about to go run up on this shorty. And like, it's like everything's about like either the sexualization or this toxic nature of relationships. But like Afrobeats are still talking about love. But um, uh, if you know what they say, it's, it'd be a lot of, they be talking about a lot they of boys too, too. too. But it still, but it's still it good. feels good. You know what I mean? Like it feels <laughs> it good. Because at the end of the day, you want, like people want to be happy. Facts. That's, but that's crazy how like, you're right. Because they could be talking about the most, the most gangster mm -hmm. But it still just sound like just, a vibe. Like, just, I don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> it just sound like a vibe. Like, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, rhythm is, is just, tempo and rhythm is an amazing thing. That's a fact, bro. I mean, this might sound like the most cliche question yeah, ever, good. but like, we always, we heard Biggie say like, mm -hmm. I remember, uh, what was it? Rapping the hard, the hard, never thought the hip hop would make it this far. far. Would you ever think that like, Afro beats will make it yeah. this far? Nah, nah, not like this. That's not, it's I like insane. selling out arenas and 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 that kind stadiums. of like stadiums, stadiums, <laughs> and it's like it's, Beyonce, type yeah, vibes. and it's and it's. But I knew that the music could do that. Mm. I didn't know what the artist would look like. I didn't know what kind of person they would take, but I knew that the music was that big. I can see that. I always knew that. You know, so it's special, it's special. So where are you at with it now? Are you still? Because first of all, first of all, that's Rowan. Mm -hmm. Cause you wrote for so many other people, yeah. Other than Beyonce, mm -hmm. uh, Jadenda. Yeah, I wrote for Jadenda, Akon, Mr. Probs, BB Rexa, Tiwa Savage, Davido. Did this come after the Beyonce? Nah, this was all before. Yeah, Damn. you know what I mean. So, so you've like, been him for. I've been just, I just been plugging. You know what I mean? Like for me, like it was just, it was, I'm always the type of person where it's like I always put it in basketball terms, right? I can't, I can't drop eighty on you if I don't take. 80 shots like you know what I mean like I gotta keep shooting mm -hmm. so for me like I'm never in a place where I'm not shooting I'm like even as an artist now I'm still shooting but you was young bro like how did you even get into that like I, before we even get to Beyonce right like how yeah. did you even get to writing for all these other artists honestly God lining it up you know what I mean like because I had a I had a friend um from the city I'm from Worcester and um he was like one of the biggest producers in our city. And he moved to LA to kind of, you know, cut his teeth in LA and try to figure it out. And I remember we were um, working on a friend of mine's album named Sam James. Um, and, you know, we really was just like, we're halfway through the album, we're wrapping it up. And then when we get to finish the album, literally 24 hours after we finished the album, he gets signed to, you know, to Sony. Like literally, I, I go to sleep, I wake up, and the man signed to Sony and it was just like, oh, this is how quick this happens. So as soon as that happened, I took that situation and I went and got a publishing deal with, with Primary Wave and, and BMG. And that publishing deal really started putting me in writing rooms. Mm -hmm. Really started like, you know, I, I moved to New York for a couple of months then moved to L.A. for a couple of months. And I was just really, you know, doing any and every session because, you know, like my daddy told me, like at the end of the day, even if a man is richer than you, more talented than you, like. You work harder, work harder than, than that. You know what I mean? So, like, there's few people that could really, like, in my mind, outwork me. Like, I was doing, like, three sessions a day. I was doing, like, 18, 19, 20 hours in the studio. You had to get burned out. Yeah. like, yeah. But, but you know what I mean? But, like, I feel like I burnt out at the right time. Meaning, like, you know what I mean? I had a, I had a daughter in 2016. So, when I had my daughter, it was, like, shut it down. Mm. You know? So, but it was the perfect time for me to shut it down because things were starting to slow down for me. And then I really started realizing, like, yo, the only way I'm going to be able to stay relevant and still chase this dream is I got to figure out a way to record from the crib. Because at that point, I was just going into studio sessions. So, I, you know, I had the blessing of being able to go into these really, you know, major historical studios that everybody been working out of in L.A. So when I got home, I was like, yo, there's no studio like that here in the crib. There's no engineers like that. Like, so for me, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to have to teach myself how to record. 
So then I spent the next year literally teaching myself how to record. I bought a computer, bought a mic, bought an interface, and I just said, you know what, I'm going to figure it out. And, you know, lo and behold, that that year and a half, almost two years, really turned into what ended up being the records that I sent to the Beyonce camp to kind of be like, mm. you know, this is what I could do. You know, so like, like I said, everything kind of lines itself up the way it's supposed to. Bro, they say, you know, success is when preparation meets opportunity. 100%. And those two years was the preparation time. 